Hey there everybody, Teacher Booth here for gshelper.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to use writable tables to determine spawn points of actors so they don't overlap with each other. Um, traditionally you would just um, have a spawner and you know tell it to spawn your actor in random uh, locations within your scene. Um, I'll hit preview and you'll see what I mean. Um, as you see like these three overlap with each other I'll refresh and now you see these three overlap with each other and that's usually not the effect you want to go for um, you, you kinda want them to be on their own spots so uh, what I've done I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these rules here uh, delete my attribute and um, what I've done is I've created a table and in this table I've charted out all the spots that I would like um, to be spawn points um, so every one of these rows um, indicates a different spot on my scene um, that I want to allow spawn points. Now, um, I'm not going to show you, like, you know, I already pre-did this table, so you'll, you'll want to figure out, you know, where you want your stuff to spawn and just, you know, put those spots in their own rows. Um, and I hit home, and I go back in, and as you see, I have this coin, and this is going to be my spawn actor. So, let's say I want to spawn 10 coins uh, around my scene, but I don't want them to overlap. Um, it's fairly simple. Um, the first thing we need to do is, this here, I'm going to go back into, ta into home and go to tables. This is our master location table. So, I'm going to type that, master location table. Um, and the reason why I'm calling it master location tables, in both writable tables, when you start changing things in the table, they're changed for good pretty much. So you never want to change your master table because the next time a user comes to play or the next time they reset the scene, you, um, you want to start with a fresh table. So what we need to do is go into our scene and in our spawn actor, actually first, sorry, I have to go back, um, go into tables and I'm going to create a new table and I'm going to call this... Uh, location table. So the first one's our master, this is our location table. I don't need to do anything to this table. Um, I'm going to go into scenes and to start a rule, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to create a, a new table. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, copy table, I'll bring that in here, and I'm going to copy my master table to my location table. Um, and that will give me a table to work with that I can edit and do whatever I want without interrupting the master location table. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a timer. And I'm going to say every zero seconds, because I want this to happen quickly, run to completion. I want to spawn um, some, st some of those uh, star coins. So what I'm going to say is um, we're going to need a... Um, an attribute to gather a random location. So we're going to create an index attribute and I'm going to call this uh, random location. And we're going to say change attribute self random location to and uh, we're going to do random open bracket and uh, we're going to go one comma and we're going to do table row count close bracket now uh, so you want to make sure there's two close brackets there and now for table I'm going to choose our game location table not the master table and what that's going to do is it's going to every time it, it, it triggers this it's going to see how many rows are left and pick a random number between those rows so once we have that we're going to spawn act, uh, actor, Oop, spawn actor, and we're going to spawn actor one, I believe. Let's just uh, hit home here. Yeah, actor one. So we're going to spawn actor one, and for position, we're going to say table cell value, and for table, we're going to use our game location table. For row. We're going to use our self random location. And for column, because we're doing x value, it's column 1. Because in my table here, I'll show you. 
Um, X values are on row uh, uh, column one, and Y values are on column two. And then for the Y values, we'll do the same thing. Table cell value. And then for table, it will be location table. For row, it will be self random location. And then for column, it will be two. And now we need to do one quick thing here. We need to um, add remove a row. So once we've used that row location, we want to remove it so it can't be used again. So we're going to um, choose our location table and we want to remove a row and we want to remove by index and what we'll do is we'll remove our random location so we're going to get remove self random location so um, at the beginning here let's say it chooses you know row 25 it's going to spawn the actor um, in the location of row 25 and then it's going to remove row 25 so that way the next time it chooses a new row row 25 won't be there um, it will it will be there but it'll be a different location because it's shrunk all the locations and then it will keep spawning so I'm gonna hit preview here and as you can see it now spawns in all these locations um, something is a little off here I'm not sure what I did um, it should be up and over one more give me one second all right I just pause it to see what I did wrong and I'll go back and I'll show you um, right here we have relative to actor we need relative to scene um, and I'll hit preview again and there you go so you see it spawned every one of them and in its own spot there's nothing overlapping uh, it's perfect now our table is empty all the spots are taken so let's say you just want to spawn 10 coins let's take this one step further um, we're going to hit the plus sign here and create an index and uh, we'll call this uh, coin count and in this timer, I'm going to create a rule, and I'm going to say when attribute self coin count is less than, uh, let's spawn 15 coins, less than 15, then we can do our rules, and then down here we will change attribute self coin count to self coin count plus one. So every time it spawns a coin, it's going to add to the count, and once the count is 15 or greater, it's going to stop doing it. Um, and I'll just, maybe I'll just drag this down to the bottom. And I'm going to hit preview here. And now you'll see we only got 15 coins, and every time I hit refresh, it chooses new locations for those coins, and never at any time will any of the coins overlap. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about spawning uh, actors in set locations without having overlap um, locations. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want, head on over to gshelper.com. Underneath the video, you'll see a download link. You can download this uh, demo file for free. Play with it. Do what you want with it. And um, uh, if you like the video, thumbs up it in YouTube. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.